What's going on guys? So Overwatch just released their new batch of content, the Year of the Rooster. And Mason and I are going to be here giving our opinions on it and how we like capture the flag, some of the new skins... Maybe we'll get into some of the, like, how the changes feel. I don't know if we are. That might be a totally new video. But shall we get into it, Mason? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And first off, I want to say how much this event means to me in particular. Um, I was born in 1993, which is the Chinese zodiac sign as the water rooster of that year. So this is my year. Uh, this is my sign and my event, and I'm going to make it my event. And I'm going to do that through uh, honing some noobs. Right. How does it feel to um, finally have some representation in Overwatch, Grandpa? Ouch. I'm not that much. <laughs> I'm not that much older than you. You're only two years older, but I still have the. I still get the ability to call you Grandpa. Right. As Max said, we have a new capture the flag mode, which is awesome. And now we have a whole slew of new objects and items, from skins to sprays, voice lines, emotes, and I gotta say. I don't know about you, Max, but in my opinion, this might be my favorite event to date. I, I've i kind of gone back and forth. I I almost think the Christmas holiday event was better for the reason of... I know you like it because that you got your May skins, and you know, you're partial to May, but I just I feel like the skins that they put out that were legendary are excellent. The Zenyatta, the Roadhog, the May, all the legendary skins that they put out are very, very good. They're done very well. I feel like they dropped the ball on some of the other skins, though. Like, if you look at the holiday event, like what, or the John, Halloween John event, Krat? when you... Do you mean Junkrat? No, you can say I'm it. not even you talking about Junkrat. Like, Farah had that purple skin, or the blue skin, oh, that for, was just uh, making her an ice pool. Yeah, and it was her as an ice school. It was amazing. I would have used that as a legendary skin. I just feel like the skins that they put out in this round, like the yeah, I mean they're all they're all pretty similar. The just... You're gonna get that though yeah, with I this feel kind like of were... holiday and this kind of like specific themed, you know. Yeah, I understand. I feel like though they could have done more. Like a, I'm gonna say Junkrat just because he kind of goes with the holiday of explosions and all the fireworks. I think they could have done something better with him. I think they could have done something better with McCree. Or see, even Soldier or something. Let's see, I don't know if I agree because... Oh, okay, so let's say Winter, for example. Um, no, you know what? Let's take it back. Let's take it back all the way to the uh, the Olympic event. Um, you have a ton of different sports. You have a ton of different countries. The... Uh, uh, you know, obviously, you can they can do with that whatever they want. You can... There's a huge variety there. Uh, even in Christmas, you have... Um, you have Rudolph. You have Santa. You have <clears throat> all these different kind of... Um, characters you can go off of and, and different little little things you can do um, but with with an event as specific as the Chinese New Year specifically because it's the rooster year um, they're pretty much limited to red gold and rooster so I'm not sure how much more they could have done unless they wanted to like give everybody a, a like a, a rooster suit um, I don't know. It, it, it was it's a it's a nice little addition, and the good thing about it is that I'm sure it didn't take Blizzard all that long to either code or model. Um, I know they have a lot of people working on this stuff, and they could crank out models and, and all that pretty easy. Um, but I think uh, the ease of allowing them to just change some colors on some models let them uh, focus more on, let's say, the capture the flag mode and uh, all the all the upcoming changes and patches to the characters. So. Um, yeah, no, I, I I understand. I just feel like they have they have some characters that are just lacking in skins. I mean, Zarya needs skins desperately. Yeah, dude, I agree with you one hundred percent. I cannot believe that she has not gotten a skin oh, no. since the Olympic event, and I don't even play her. But the fact that she's been overlooked uh, in the Olympic event skin. She, she, she got a winter. She got the shiver skin, didn't she? But it's it's just one of her other skins. Uh, Right, she has like not a gotten white like an actual custom skin. Like loot, like um, Zenyatta has turned into absolutely everything. Like Zenyatta's got a skin great, almost yeah. every event, and it's elaborate. Zarya's skins, like her weightlifter skin, it was just her in a t-shirt. It was just she's just overlooked, and I feel like no matter what, even if it doesn't fit with the holiday a hundred percent, they could have done something with a Zarya skin too. to at least give players you know something to do. Whether it was 
you know, her with a cool chicken hat or just something. Like, Whoa, hot, hot they, take. They, they, they left right? something out. So, is this Overwatch's, uh, is this Blizzard's way of telling us that Zarya is no longer in the meta? No. Yeah, no, she's no, very, that's yeah, not. okay. Now that we've kind of touched on the skins a little bit, I think we need to talk about the capture the flag mode that we happen to play four hours of a whether that was on purpose or by accident last night. We had so much fun. Like, I am having so much fun, and this is, since Overwatch came out, I don't know how many months ago, uh, it seems like, I don't know, 12, so, I don't, it hasn't been a year, but, um, That's a year. Has it been? I don't know, you said 12 months, you might as well just said a year. <laughs> okay, yeah, year. well, so, I realized something about a couple months ago while I was playing Overwatch. You have two objectives. If, well, say you play competitive or quick play, you have you have pretty much two two options. You have your control point, and you have your payload. On the same maps over and over again, and sometimes, even if you can change characters and your teams change, blah blah blah, it's still the same thing over and over again, more or less, correct? Correct. Right. And so what I've been telling myself is like, okay, I know Blizzard's gonna do something, they have to change it up soon because it's been like a year since the game is out, people are getting kinda antsy for something new. Which is why they added Arcade, which is why they started throwing in 6v6 and Mystery Heroes, but even in those games, it's still Control Point and it's still Payload. For the most part. So when they added Capture the Flag, I was hyped. Because it's a completely different style of play for what you're used to playing Overwatch in. Um, but it's something I that's like totally dear to my heart back in the Halo 2 and 3 days. Um, I was Even Call of Duty, you know, all the shooters yeah, I had. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was yearning for the day that this happened, and when it did, I was hyped, and I have to say I'm having a ton of fun. No, I am too, and I have a few things I kind of want to like, I, I thought of immediately, but like, I think Blizzard has consistently improved to these little side note, side modes. It started with the Junkrat one, which was fun, but the replayability on that was... Oh, junk and, junk and Sun's yeah. Revenge? Yeah, really fun. Was fun. Going was off that... Mode, but it was just... Save the medals. Right, yeah, like, going off that event, um, it was in one specific part of the map, which never changed. I think if they took... If they took that event and just moved it around for like a couple different rounds, it would have added some replayability. But even that one, as different as it was, it was kind of lackluster in terms of like, all right, well, I've done it twice. Like, what's the appeal to doing it a third time, you know? Yeah, and then they had Maze one, which was fun. I had actually a lot of fun with it. But again, it was, you're stuck on the one map. I did love the whole one, one in the chamber kind of Call of Duty throwback, but with May. But it was you were stuck on one map, the map was small, and there was just a whole kind of iffy amount of replayability. You had one character you could use, and that was it. Yeah. But now, they've now improved it to it's the entirety of the game. You can use whatever character you want. Also, they had that Lucio ball, which was fun, but eh. And well, now and, you can use every yeah. character in the game. And with this, they've essentially made this new mode, and I think it could become a competitive mode. I think they could actually yeah, transfer absolutely. this and create a competitive and mode. And you know what I love so much about it? Is it's not, it's one, it's Leijing Tower, okay? But it's not just the market. Like, oh, it's points. not like, you know, it's not how Maze Snowball uh, was, where it's just the same thing every time, or Junkrat's the same little map. Um, you have three different maps, and I think, um, although you're you're limited to Lijang Tower as a whole, I think the three different breakups of the maps uh, lead to some awesome stuff. No, yeah, and I, I totally agree. It gives you the replayability of it's not the same thing every time. Also, it has totally broken that three tank meta that is totally irrelevant at this point. And yeah, and that's it seems um, every game you get a Symmetra, a Torbjorn. Farah is hugely used, Tracer. It seems like all these characters that have just been irrelevant for so long, Bastion is like one of the biggest things in the game, it gives them new life. Like, now they have the ability to be focused and be the, like, forefront of a game mode. Yeah, and I gotta tell you, man, Bastion, right now, Bastion and Symmetra are a, <laughs> they're a little overpowered on this game mode, and it's yet to, it's yet to be seen whether or not this is gonna become a if they're just going to throw this in the arcade playlist, um, or if this is going to be a full-fledged, um, you know, established game type, and I hope it becomes that. 
Um, they're going to have to rework it in competitive, obviously. obviously uh, I think they're going to have to add some more maps, not just Li Zhang Tower, um, maybe Ilios or something like that. Or, um, but I think it would. I think it lends itself because it's so different, but still strategic, uh, very strategic, if not more so than than just the normal payload. Um, I think it has a serious shot at, at being established as a permanent game type. No, and I totally agree. And it gives this, and like you said, it's a whole different kind of strategic part, like. Overwatch itself, as far as the capture point, it's very, everyone has to do the same thing at once, you're focused on teamwork more or less. In this one, there are several games, and maybe I'll upload a clip of it in this gameplay, depending on, or this kind of video, depending on how it goes, or what we choose to put behind it, but there were a few games where I was a Pharah, I'd go, like, behind the map flying, and I would never even fire a shot, and I would just drop on the point, drop on the flag, capture it, and pounce back up in the air. Yeah, and, I, and I would never fire a shot, and it was a huge, it was extremely effective. Yeah, so I absolutely love, last night when we were all playing, uh, we got a group of sixes on CTF, and I gotta tell you, with that group of people, I haven't had that much fun playing competitive ever, I'd say. Um... <laughs> My, my brother and I, we were both playing def defense while everyone else was attacking and we were communicating, guys, I'm going to stay back with, with Austin, you guys go up front, you guys attack, you go around the left, we'll hold down the fort, make sure they don't take the flag. I think that was so, I don't know, it was so unique in terms of I've never had to play that way in Overwatch, but I, that's exactly what I thought, that's exactly what I knew I was missing from it. Yeah, no, it's just this whole new... It's a new field of the game. It's getting away from this super high pressure environment into a more ew, fun, ew, ew. you can play as you want. Yeah. yeah, instead of just killing and everything, now you're able to kind of strategically, if the other team pushes, then you push. But obviously, there's also going to be the, the reworking that's going to have to be done. There's a lot of ties that are going on right now. Ton of I girls. think Ton if, they, if they do choose to make it competitive, they've got to do something about that Torby, Symmetra, Bastion kind of idea, because I don't care who you run with or what you do, even if you pop ults, having Torby, Symmetra, and Bastion in there, well, so that it begs makes the it really impossible to get in. So that begs the question, what, going off the top of your head right now, what can they do to those characters to make them? Because you obviously can't, you can't nerf them and you can't buff them. Um, no. Because you can't do that for one game type, it has to be for the better of the character as a whole. Um, I don't, I don't know if I see a fix. I think it's just it is what it is that those characters aren't viable and competitive, and they definitely are in that game type, and I think that's fine. I think they have, if they choose to go the route of trying to make it more even as far as that goes, they have two options. One, you make the points where the flags are more open, because right now as it is. You've got these points, especially the one on Li Jong Tower when it's like in the middle where you don't have like that fair ability where it's like it has the cap, it has a roof on it. That point is in that little room where Bastion can sit in a corner behind a Reinhardt with Symmetra turrets all around. If they make the points more open, like if they had them in an open area, then you could have Widow or Hanzo. You just have the ability to counter the Bastion and counter a Torbjorn much easier than having it in a small room where there's only like one or two entries. Sure. The other thing that I think they could do is make it a central point. So don't have two flags. Have one central flag that you have to take back or forth. What's so like, you know, Overwatch dodgeball? So no, not like Overwatch dodgeball, but have like a central flag that you fight for. So, you know, you go into a team fight and you try to fight for the flag and you try to sneak and capture the flag and bring it back to your base without the other team killing you. You know or what? You try to take it to their base. That's a pretty I neat think, alternative, actually. Yeah, I think that might... But that would make it so, you know, the only way you could set up a Symmetra in there is if you had captured the point and the team chased you back and then you could strategically or, you know, sneakily put a Symmetra or a Bastion right. there so when they come back, you take them out. It would just prevent it from being, you know, this whole... We're just gonna sit in the back with four tanks, and if we get it, fantastic. If not, it's a draw kind of situation. Right, and I think you'll see, you'll start to see a lot of different techniques in terms of how teams want to attack and defend. Um, I've been playing a lot of mid, where I'm not necessarily defending and I'm not necessarily attacking. I'm making sure that they can't uh, advance past me, but at the same time, I don't want to advance on offense because that Bastion's just hiding. Um, so it's tough. I don't know. It's 
if it if it gets to the point where it's a permanent game type, which I hope it does, um, it lends itself to a whole bunch of different strategies. So that's going to be pretty cool to see. Yeah, I think I think it's just going to be a waiting period. I think maybe this is the fact that they put this out in arcade and they're just going to you know try to get feedback and see how it goes. And if they choose to make it competitive, it's because the community has said you know we like this. If they choose not to, it's because more of the community said no. Right. Going off, so the the new patch that just happened along with the event. Um, I did use Roadhog for a little bit last night. I didn't notice anything too groundbreaking. Uh, I was still pretty effective with him, and honestly, I'm glad they nerfed him because we can all agree that it was absurd. Um, used yeah, Ana, used Ana for a little bit. Uh, what they <laughs> what they did to her grenade kind of sucks, but I still think she's plenty effective. Yeah, I um I totally forgot about the patch last night, and I didn't really get to think about it all that much. I didn't kind of go into it and think, oh well. Let's see how D.Va, how effective I can be against her, but I think we should definitely put out another video soon. I think we will, once we've had time to play actual competitive with this patch and see actually, like, see how the meta maybe has changed since. Alright, so that's, I think, where we're going to end the video. We've kind of gotten into a little bit about the Year of the Rooster event, our opinions. We haven't got a ton to say about the new, as far as character changes, the buffs and nerfs, just because we haven't played really any competitive yet, but that'll be coming in a video soon. So at this point, we're going to have to bid you adieu. As always, stay achieving, and we'll see you at the next video. Thanks, guys. See you soon.